Oh, hello, VAT. Welcome to today's tutorial. This is how to start a bison on fire. When the document opens, you have to adjust the size of the bison and you have to move it. So I'm using the move tool to move the bison down onto the floor and I'm using edit, free transform, holding shift, stretching from the corner. When I'm done stretching, I hit enter on the keyboard move that where I want it and now it's time to start to trim around the bison usually what you might do is use the eraser tool to erase the pixels around it but that creates trauma to the actual image and you'll never get those pixels back if you make a mistake you make a mistake and there's no getting it back so what I wanted to teach you today is something uh, of a new tool uh, that you can use instead of using the eraser tool what we're going to apply to this layer is this little guy at the bottom of the layers palette. It's called the layer mask. So this button says add layer mask. So I'm going to click that. It's going to add a little white rectangle uh, to that layer. I'm just going to hide my fire layer real quick so it gets out of my way. This white little uh, rectangle, when it's selected, it uh, puts you into a mask, a layer mask mode. When you click on the regular little uh, thumbnail of the bison is no longer in that editing mode but while you are clicked on that white rectangle what you can do is use the brush tool so here's the brush tool be sure not to get it confused with the history brush tool that's totally different so the brush tool and you can use what is by de default in your color palette here you have black and white um, black and white brushes are used to take away pixels and bring them back the little flippy flappy arrow here next to the colors allows you to switch back and forth between black and white. Black on a brush allows you to take pixels away from the image, hide them behind the mask, and if you flip it back to white being the foreground color here, you can bring those pixels right back as if they never uh, were deleted. So you're not deleting pixels, you're just hiding pixels. So what I do is I zoom in for detailed areas and I use a small brush uh, the brush sizes can be changed up here in the control panel when you have the brush selected you can change here the size of the brush and the hardness of the brush when I'm deleting this area I want it there to be a crisp edge so that my uh, so that my um, bison doesn't look like it's it's like uh, sort of ghostly so I use the hard edged brush to delete and you don't you can go around you can delete some of this extra he's molting so feel free to take away some of the the hair that's falling off his tummy so this be and if you truly wanted to you could zoom in so close and uh, use a brush that is so tiny and I'm using bracket keys too to change the brush size bracket keys just below the backspace button uh, left bracket makes it smaller, right bracket makes it bigger, so that'll work too. So in detailed areas, you might have to zoom in real close, and you might have to use little brushes. Uh, in larger areas, you could probably get away with, you know, using bigger brushes to take away larger amounts of pixels. And if you, whoops, make a mistake, you can always flop that back to white and bring them back, because it wasn't a true erase, it was simply a mask. Um, so I'm going to go about this, and I'll be right back. All right, so now that that magically disappeared, I was using small brushes and being zoomed in for detailed areas, and I was using larger brushes to get away some of the big areas. I finally got this, uh, this guy all cut out. Uh, what I usually like to do to this layer is I like to go to Image Adjustments because one of the things that um, it's going to take for me to... Uh, to make this look realistic is it's going to have to look like it's in a basement. And the photo of this bison was shot outside, so it looks very sunny. Um, it's got a lot of brightness to it that wouldn't happen in a basement. So right now, I just got done using the layers, the, ma the mask, the layer mask here. But now I want to actually edit the layer and the way it looks. So I have to click over to this guy here and then go to image adjustment and do things like, um, I'll probably do two things to this. I'll probably go to levels and just darken a little bit using the dark arrow, just a smidge uh, over to the right. Um, potentially, 
working a little bit with the gray just to get rid of some of the highlights and then hitting OK. I also will go to image adjustments and because in the sun colors are more saturated and when you're in the dark uh, they're not as saturated so I kind of tone down the saturation of the colors a little bit by going to image uh, adjustment hue saturation and just adjusting the saturation down a smidge. So I'm going to hit OK and that looks a little less colorful now a little bit more appropriate for the basement here. Uh, I'm going to bring back the fire layer and the fire uh, I'm going to put it in, into place. I can control T or go to edit, free transform, holding shift, stretch. And then hit enter when I'm done. Um, what I like to do with the fire, because it would be really difficult to do that same sort of method of erasing um, the pixels. If you were to try to erase away the black, you have black pixels all in the fire in all, all sorts of ways. So it would be really very difficult. So what I try to do instead, and if this if this works, it'll be great. It'll be much easier. Uh, I, I click on that layer, the fire, and I go to where it says normal, and I pick one of these different um, one of these different blending modes in here to get rid of the black pixels. So um, some of them look good, some of them don't. So you just gotta kind of scroll through and find the one that works best. Uh, I'm thinking color dodge is gonna work the best for me. And um, I might, just because I can see like where this crisp edge is right here, I might just take the eraser tool and do a small amount of erasing up here just to make it look a little bit more natural there. Okay. Um, so making sure that the blending mode is set so that it's see-through, all that black kind of goes away, and then placing it where you want to. If you need to stretch it, move it, whatever you need to do, uh, you can do that now. All right, so the fire's looking more natural. Uh, the color of the bison and getting rid of the outline around it, getting rid of all that extra stuff is, is done. Now um, I'm looking at this thing and what I've noticed is that there's no shadow underneath his hooves. So it almost as if, almost as if like he's a ghost or something because all things would have a shadow. So I'm going to make sure that I put in a shadow right now. Uh, on the ground, if you click on the ground level, the, the first layer, and then you add a layer, uh, right next to the garbage can at the bottom of your layers palette, there's an add layer button. So this is the add, uh, the added layer, and it's blank. Um, while it's blank, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush, um, and I'm going to use a black brush, but I'm going to set the brush to be extremely soft all the way uh, down uh, to the left, and then I'm going to set the opacity of the brush down to say, uh, let's start with 30% and see how that goes. I'm going to set the size of the brush by using bracket keys right underneath the backspace button to be about the same size as the hoof uh, that I can see here. And I'm going to just drag once, twice, and each time I drag I'm stopping a little bit shorter. Um, that way the layering effect, uh, it'll be darkest underneath right underneath the hoof and the darkness will kind of fade or dissipate so I'm going to click once and drag out click once and drag out click once. and this is all uh, on its own layer so if you make a mistake you can easily uh, just get rid of that layer uh, I think this is turning out um, pretty good. So you pull out and then keep adding a little bit more of that dark shadow because shadows are always darkest like near the form like where it touches the floor or whatever. So so that looks pretty cool. Um, I'm going to do one last thing. I think this is a nice touch if you click and go back up to the top layer and you're going to add what's called an adjustment layer. So here this button right next to the layer mask that we added earlier is an adjustment layer and if you click on it there's lots of different types of adjustment layers and what I'm going to do is um, before I click on solid color what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to select the color that I need uh, for that and the color that I want is going to be from the fire so I'm going to use this thing called the uh, eyedropper tool and I'm going to come over to the fire and if you click and hold it you can move around on that fire it's going to show you all the different colors inside of there when you find a color that meets uh, 
like you want a temperature of the fire so like an orange I think would be great and then what I'm going to do once I have that orange here by using by stealing it with the eyedropper tool um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add that adjustment layer I'm going to add a solid color and it's going to add basically a layer over the top you could change the color now if you wanted to but uh, I like that color I'm going to hit OK and that layer basically is hovering over everything so it's covering everything up and what's great about adding an adjustment layer is that it also has within it the ability it, it already comes with a layer mask so the layer mask is right here just like we had on the bison layer and we can use that brush tool using black paint and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to turn up uh, the, the opacity because I lowered it earlier let's turn it back up to actually I'm sorry I'm gonna turn that down to um, say like 20 20 percent and my brush is already set to a uh, very low hardness and all I got to do now is set it to a very very big gigantic brush like this like 2,000 3,000, uh, 2,000 pixels or something like that. All right. And so I'm going to zoom out just a smidge. Zoom out just a smidge. I got this big old brush, and I'm going to click once, make the brush smaller, click again, make the brush smaller, click again a couple times. And I'm basically erasing away that orange layer quite a bit something like that and then you can see like by hiding that layer that adjustment layer how much it actually does change uh, the illusion um, it casts the the color from the fire onto the walls and everything so that's a pretty cool effect for getting everything to look um, like it belongs and everything so creating this illusion a couple different steps there I hope this video helps uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you in class